Oh, hello everyone. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really honored to not only have been invited to this wonderful event, but almost to be the first one to start it. Quite excited. I would like to share with you now a few impressions and experiences from what I call my second home, and that is the European Arctic. The Arctic is just such a fascinating place. Vast expanses of snow and ice, icebergs of all forms and colors, and landscapes that are so beautiful that no picture can do them justice. I'll never forget the first time I saw the Northern Lights. Greenish curtains of light moving over the night sky like beautiful ghosts dancing underneath the stars. It's moments like those that made me spellbound by the magic of the Arctic and that inspired me to become a passionate nature photographer. Now, the first country of the North that I visited and later lived in was Iceland. As a child of climate change, I have grown up with the knowledge that the temperatures are rising, yet I never expected that I would be able to see any consequences. The generation after me would probably witness something, I thought, which is why I was honestly surprised when I started seeing changes right away when I came to Iceland. What I did not know was the small but important fact that our Arctic warms up twice as fast as the rest of the world. So if climate change is visible anywhere, then here. The glaciers of Iceland, for instance, they retreat at such an amazing speed that I could see the differences year by year. Some glacier fronts are moving backwards at a speed of 100 meters per year, like here at the famous glacier lagoon of Jökulsárlón. Now, to read about the melting of the ice, to read about the melting of the ice is one thing, but to see it with your own eyes is nothing but scary. A few years ago, I moved to Svalbard, which is an archipelago in between Norway and the North Pole. The land up there is really barren. Only the most specialized animals and plants manage to survive in these high Arctic conditions. It gets so cold in the wintertime that even the ocean freezes, which is why the area surrounding the North Pole is covered with sea ice. But now, with the temperatures on a constant rise, the sea ice is retreating as well. If you look at this animation, then you'll see the 10 lowest minimum extents of sea ice did all happen in the last 11 years. The ice is retreating much faster than I ever thought it would. But why should we care? Why is the melting of a frozen ocean far away from us anything to worry about? One might think that the ice up there would prevent the existence of life, but it's actually the opposite. The ocean surrounding the sea ice is buzzing with life as the sea ice provides habitat and food to many different species. Without the sea ice, a whole ecosystem would simply cease to exist. If I would ask you to name me an animal that lives in the Arctic, which would be the first one to cross your mind? The polar bear, of course. Those white bears, they have stormed the hearts of the people of the world, and mine too. Seeing a polar bear in the wild is just such an amazing experience. Up on Svalbard, around the edge of the sea ice, I've usually encountered beautiful, healthy bears, being the unchallenged kings and queens of the Arctic. Watching them is both intimidating and awe-inspiring at the same time. But as everywhere in nature, you don't always see fat and happy animals. Some of the bears that I encounter are really thin, and they are so desperate for food that they eat the kelp on the coasts. Now, sometimes those thin bears might be old and with dental problems. They might be injured, sick, or simply inexperienced young hunters. But they also might have to starve as a result of the absence of sea ice, which they heavily depend on in order to hunt seals. Without the sea ice, they spend more time on land where there's hardly any food to be found, so they starve. That applies particularly to females with their newly born cubs, because they need a lot of food right away in order to make it through the summer. Already now, scientists have found that polar bear litter sizes in some populations are declining because the mothers are too malnourished to give birth or nurse the cubs afterwards. 
Knowing this should have prepared myself for what I recall being the most memorable encounter with a polar bear. While on a trip around Svalbard in July 2015, I met the thinnest polar bear I've ever seen. A mere skeleton drifting on a small ice floe close to shore. It was really shy and it obviously disliked our presence, so we kept our distance and de decided to leave it before we would stress it even more. When I returned from the trip, I was so moved by the experience and so shocked that I decided to put a picture of the bear on Facebook. But, oh, I didn't know what I was getting myself into. That picture got viral and spread all over the Internet. It triggered an avalanche of responses that totally took me by surprise. I got lots of comments on it, positive ones, but a scary amount of negative ones, too. I even got some hate mails. I was called a liar, an exaggerating show-off, a stupid Greenpeace activist whose opinion would not matter because I wasn't a scientist and I could not prove any connection to climate change. Well, it is true that I cannot prove why this bear was starving. No one can, really. But it wasn't the first thin bear that I've seen, close to land, far away from any sea ice with no seals in sight. How could I not think of a possible connection to a lack of food caused by the retreat in sea ice caused by man-made global warming? The US Geological Survey predicts that two-thirds of the world's polar bear population might disappear by 2050 because of the loss of sea ice. Now, try to get your head around what I just said. Two-thirds of the polar bears might vanish within the next 34 years? And that is actually an optimistic prediction. How sad and scary is that? So, even though many polar bears seem to be doing good right now, they are already heavily impacted by the loss of sea ice. This pitiful, emaciated polar bear might give us a glimpse into what could be a very near and realistic future. If the melting of the sea ice continues at the current speed, then sites like these might become more common very soon. And that is why I personally try to ignore all those negative comments and focus on the positive ones. After having seen the image, many people were motivated to do something. Some even asked me to use the photo for their courses. And suddenly this bear appeared in critical arts. It was shown in demonstrations worldwide, printed in school books and numerous articles. It was displayed during the last climate conference in Paris. It was even shown in the German parliament in order to underline the importance of climate action. This picture has become a new icon of climate change. It somehow consoles me and makes me feel that maybe, hopefully, that poor bear didn't die for nothing. I have been asked many times by people what we can do to help the bears, and I guess that you expect me to talk about climate action now. Well, you're right. But before that, I want to talk about something that hardly anyone speaks about, and that is the ongoing hunting of polar bears. Every year, up to around 1,000 polar bears are killed by us. Did you know that? Many of them are actively hunted in order to sell their skin on the ever-growing markets of the world. Canada even allows trophy hunting, and commercial trade with polar bear products is not forbidden, even though polar bears are listed as a threatened species. Doesn't it sound absurd to you, too? I mean, how can we possibly justify hunting them if we don't even know how many polar bears there are alive today, while scientists are predicting such a difficult future for them? The thing is, polar bears have survived previous global warming events in the past, and they can potentially survive this one too. But in those warmer times in the past, there were no humans which hunted them or interfered with them and their habitat. Every single polar bear which is alive today might be crucial for the long-term survival of the species. So what we have to do right now, what I think is really urgent, is to put up a complete circumpolar moratorium on all polar bear hunting. Only then the species might be able to survive the changes to the environment that global warming is causing. 
The day after tomorrow, I'll be traveling to Svalbard again, but with very mixed feelings this time. I know with all my heart how, ex how um, privileged I am to see the nature up there, but at the same time, it really hurts to see the changes that global warming so obviously brings. Since 2001, our planet has experienced 15 out of the 16 warmest years on record. No wonder the ice is melting up there. Last year was the warmest year ever measured, and it looks like 2016 will be even hotter. From what I've heard, there's very little sea ice around Svalbard already now, which means it's probably going to be a hard summer for all these animals, depending on the frozen ocean. But enough of all these negative news, because there is hope. We still have a good chance to stop climate change and even reverse some of its negative effects. But in order to do that, we need to take individual action. Some people will say it's too late. Humanity isn't reacting fast enough, we're all doomed. But hey, that's exactly the way how not to make any progress. So let me tell you my secret weapon against climate change. It's optimism. I've never been so positive in believing that, yes, we can tackle that huge challenge, no matter how overwhelming and hopeless it sometimes seems. Just look at what we have achieved in the past, just in the last few years alone. Renewable energies are taking over much faster than anyone ever thought they would. There's more and more people realizing that there are alternatives to industrial mass production and global consumerism. Things are changing to the better, they really are. There's thousands of people out there who have great ideas and started amazing projects to fight climate change. The only thing we have to do is to jump on and make it happen. So don't feel helpless and alone, because you're not. There's so much an individual like you and me can do, little things that will make a difference for sure. Try to reduce your carbon emissions. For instance, by driving your car less often, or only fly if it's really necessary. Be a responsible consumer, so try to buy locally produced goods rather than those being transported all over the globe. As everywhere in life, it's more about the quality than quantity of things. Try to avoid products from factory farms. Eat less meat. Maybe you might be up to having a vegetarian or even a vegan day once a week. You'll see that it's both healthy, climate-friendly, and it can actually taste good. There's one more thing you can do, and that is to minimize the use of plastics in your everyday life by reducing, reusing, and recycling more of your garbage. You're doing a big favor both to the climate and your environment. So, Every single bit of CO2 which is not blown into the atmosphere will help to slow down global warming. It's as simple as that. Try to involve yourself in climate action and nature conservation and do it where you have the most power, which is at home, at work, in local groups and local politics. Our actions here will affect the climate and life on the other side of the planet too, and that includes the Arctic and the polar bears. Our actions here, they will affect everything. We are a, more, a lot more connected than we think we are, not only on Facebook, but also in real life. The polar areas, they're home to what I believe are the most beautiful landscapes and fascinating animals on our planet. I believe that we should do whatever we can to preserve them for us and the following generations. Don't you think so too? Thank you.